So I'm going to show you a really cool tutorial about how you can turn a photograph like this into a bit of a painting. Let's get into it. So to begin with, you can use any photograph you like. I'm using this one of some seasonal vegetables, etc. Um, but it does work kind of quite well, I found in, in practice beforehand with images that kind of have that almost like renaissance style so portraits can be kind of quite nice when they're a bit more low-key a bit flat um, a little bit more retro but it's not to say that it's exclusive in any way shape or form but either way let's get straight into it firstly what we need to do is to create a new layer that we can kind of create our painting on so to do so we're going to go to layer new layer so we'll just call this one painting what we also need to be able to do as well is to be able to see our painting as well as see our document underneath. But sometimes when you're working at full opacity, it can be pretty hard to kind of tell the two layers apart. So just to help with that, we're actually going to unlock our base layer. So to do so, we're just going to click on this little padlock down here. So we've now got our base layer and we're just going to reduce the opacity of that to around about... Well, ultimately it's down to whatever suits your eyes. I'm going to go around about let's say 70% around about there. You can choose kind of whatever opacity you like. It's just how it helps you that you can see your top document. You can see our painting layer as well as being able to see the background, but not too much. Now, what we need to do next is go and grab a brush, but this is a special type of brush. This is what we call a mixer brush. So you'll find the mixer brush, not normally, with this brush tool up here, the most commonly used one. But again, down in the sub menu with the other options here, if you press there and hold on to that, you'll actually see an option called Mixer Brush Tool. So if we select that, we get loads of different options at the top here. Now, again, depending upon how you want to create this, you can go back and you can change these settings every now and again if you do this tutorial a few times over. But I'm going to show you the settings that I use that I found kind of quite suitable. So this first option here is about loading the brush after each stroke. Um, we're actually going to turn that off. We don't really need that for this one. And then this next option here, you'll see if you hover over these icons a little bit more, is about cleaning the brush after each stroke. We are going to turn that on. So you can see the differences. Off is like a light gray. Um, on is a pale, it's a darker gray, sorry. Right, so further moving on, you have got some presets that you can choose from here. But again, I'm just going to show you some of my options that I've used in the past. I'm going to reduce the wet around about 30% or so. I'm going to take the load down to around about 27. So this is just how much paint it actually carries and the, the effect of it in a way. Um, so with the mix, I think we'll drop that around about, about 35, 36%. Um, and again, our flow, about similar. Take it down to around about 30 or so. Now we do want to turn on this option, the turn on all sample or the sample all layers, because that means what our brush is going to be using is any evidence of detail and color from any of the layers that are set up here. Obviously our painting layer is completely blank, so there's nothing there to take. So it will be taking all the information from our background layer, our vegetables down there. And now it's just a simple case of enjoying yourself and having a bit of a paint. So it can be really time consuming. It can take kind of quite a while to do things like this, but it's like any painting. It takes time. It takes love. But I'm just going to draw on some of our objects here. Let's go a little bit closer in. So let's go down to some of the potatoes at the bottom here. We're going, we can adjust the size of our brush by using our open brackets and closing brackets effect. And all we're doing is just making little clicks and little brushes. So it may not seem as if we're actually doing anything at the minute. It may just seem as if we're actually erasing our top layer, but we're not. We're actually painting on top of it at the moment. Now, if you're starting to see a bit of an effect, you can always go back and you can change your settings a little bit more. You can increase the wetness. You can increase the load, etc. So there's no harm with actually changing your settings throughout. It will potentially kind of create a slightly unusual look. It looks as if you change different painting styles. Uh, throughout the process which is not normally the case if you're actually painting if you've ever done anything like that before but sometimes it's just good to play around you can use some of the presets that are in there as well you can go back over sometimes and just make the effect a little bit thicker a little bit stronger try painting in different directions because again this is all very very authentic or at least as authentic as it can be that the more times you click on the same space, the heavier the effect will be. 
the less you do, the, obviously the softer the effect, etc. So you can see down here it's a little bit more blurred around by the onions and it's a little bit cleaner up by the potatoes because I haven't gone that heavy and plus I've changed some of the settings before. So again, this really is just a personal, ca a personal case of how you want the actual effect to be. I'm going to zoom out a little bit further and make some larger brush strokes so you can see the, uh, the effect coming together a little bit quicker. And there we go. So we've gone around our whole document, made sure we've used that mixer brush to paint. We've used some different settings at different points so you can see somehow it's a little bit more blurred, sometimes it's a little bit more cleaner and softer, etc. But if we just kind of click on and off our preview here to see how the effect was before and then what our painting has actually done, we're just actually going to increase the opacity back to 100%. So that was our original photograph and that's our painting. So you can see it's softened the effect a lot more. It's quite blurred in certain areas, but that's really what painting is. It's not photorealistic. It's a rendering which will have a little bit more texture, a little bit more style to it. You can go further and then actually grab some texture files and overlay it over the top, but it's a very, very simple process. It takes a little bit of time to get used to. You can choose different um, choices in terms of the settings on that mixer brush as we looked at before. You can actually add on options about loading the brush after every stroke and not cleaning it, choosing some of the presets and playing around with these. It's all going to be personal depending upon the project that you're actually working on. But hopefully you've enjoyed this little tutorial about changing a photograph into a painting. If you have, keep watching iPhotography for more. Thanks very much for watching.